Good morning, everyone. Today's January 21st, 2021. And welcome to Mediation, the New Possibilities <coughs> Hour. Today, our special guest is Richard Lutringer to talk about mediating family business disputes. And there's nobody more qualified to talk about this. It's been a major focus of Richard's practice for most of his career. He's very involved in the Family uh, Valuation Institute. Richard, is that what it's called? A family firm institute. Family yes. firm institute. Richard has had a distinguished career in the law before turning to arbitration and mediation. He's been a partner in Schiff Harden, a partner in Morgan Lewis, and a very prominent legal career, and has now been a full-time mediator and arbitrator, and has really found his niche. And uh, we want to remind everybody that this is a fundraiser for food banks. There's no charge for these great webinars. Rather, we ask you to contribute to a food bank of your choice if you like what you see. And Richard, we're gonna give you an opportunity as we give all our speakers an opportunity to mention a food bank that's important to you before you begin your substantive comments. Gene, I believe this morning, you are gonna give us the running total of how we're doing in terms of uh, how much money our generous audiences have contributed to fight food insecurity since the pandemic began and since we began this series last spring. Please let us know. Let's see, let me get the calculator going here. Okay, it looks like we're up to about $68,800. And that's just what Natalie has been advised of. It could be a lot more than that. And so it's just fantastic. As you make your contributions, if you would be so kind as to let Natalie or Jeff or myself know, of the amount, that would be great. She can add it to the running total. And, and thank you all so much, it's fantastic. We're headed for $100,000 to fight food insecurity. Richard, thank you so much for being a part of the effort. Why don't you please tell us about a food bank that's important to you, uh, people who are in a position to contribute. We hope they can uh, direct their contributions there and let us know about them. Richard, my friend, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, my favorite food bank is called FIND, F-I-N-D. I'm not sure what they was, what that's an acronym for, but it's in Indio, uh, California, which is an area which has a lot of uh, migrant labor, a lot of agricultural labor, and uh, also is very, very busy during this uh, COVID period. Um, so I would appreciate any thoughts you could give to um, donate a few dollars to FIND. F-I-N-D. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, well, um, Jeff, this is a great honor. And uh, I also see a number of people who know uh, probably more than I do about this. And so I will be very careful not to make too many mistakes and um, uh, rely on people to add comments or questions. And at the end, I'm hopefully we get a really good question period, uh, because that not only do I learn, but also um, I think it adds a lot to everyone's experience. Um, resolving uh, disputes among family business owners presents for a mediator unique challenges um, not present in ordinary shareholder or partner disputes. Although I know that many on the Zoom call today are either mediators or have used mediation, for those who are not sure what exactly I mean by the term, mediation is essentially a neutral third party assisting two or more partners uh, parties uh, in the resolution of a dispute. Its big brother, arbitration, also relies on a neutral third party, but in that case, the neutral third party actually decides in favor of one party or the other, just as a judge would in, in a court. A mediator, on the other hand, works with the disputing parties alone and together uh, to help them understand not only their respective legal positions, but also their underlying interests, i.e. what really matters to them. In mediation, the parties themselves, with the help of the mediator, work out the optimal resolution of the dispute. In the area of family business disputes, the challenge is often not in litigation. Although some family business disputes have been so protracted uh, involving such deep feelings that a judge has to finally resolve the legal issues, which however does not 
resolve the family schisms that may ha never be healed. And uh, if we had time, I could talk about several very famous family disputes that have been written up in the um, newspapers and uh, been around for years. And surprising, when people have a lot of money, they seem to find ways to not like each other more, which is why we're talking about that. Um, one extreme, but not, not that uncommon scenario, uh, matriarch parent, nurturing mother and wife of a founder, unexpectedly thrust into sole shareholder role by death of the husband entrepreneur. Uh, we're going to see later uh, a similar case, but the, the father was the last to die and it's the children who are taking over. Although her adult children working in the business continually complain about each other to her, she compensates with money and is unwilling to openly discuss or deal with underlying tensions to avoid disrupting pleasant familial relationships. When she passes on and tensions finally break through, both family and business are in jeopardy. Uh, the search for, quote, peace in the family, unquote, like the proverbial road to hell can be paved with good intentions. Now, should conflict in the family business be discouraged? Conflict itself within a family business, as well as any organization, is not something to be avoided. It is, in fact, the most important change. As described by John Paul Lederach in his terrific book, The Little Book of Conflict Transformation, I'll quote a, a sentence from the book, conflicts in relationships at all levels are the way life helps us to stop, assess, and take notice. Without it, life would be a monotonously flat topography of sameness and our relationships would be woefully superficial. Very general term, but I think it puts the idea of what uh, disputes and conflict can be in a very positive way um, and how moving on is not moving in a bad direction. As mediators, we are privileged to be invited into a private family business situation to help them deal with what is the ownership slash management slash employment conflict of the moment. The parties are usually in the midst of a defined conflict, such as the issue of leadership, the division of profits or management responsibility, and cannot find a way to move forward. That conflict, however, may be only the tip of the iceberg with many past family related issues lying under the surface. I would like to spend a few minutes discussing the family owned business as a distinct concept discuss why mediation is particularly well-suited to resolving these disputes. And finally, some practical tips for mediators in dealing with multiple parties and issues in the family business uh, mediation context. Now, why are family business disputes different? Um, the interrelationship of family management and business ownership issues presents several layers of ongoing relationships which need to be taken into account if a lasting resolution is to be reached. Again, the goal is not to suppress conflict, but rather to allow the parties to understand each other in a way they may not have before and to make more informed decisions. In many of these companies, the uh, founder was the basically the dictator and the owner and the worked 23 hours a day and built the company up and made all decisions. In that case, there were not many disputes of the kind we're talking about today because he solved them all. He solved them all by talk, telling his children what he wanted and maybe fighting with them, but his word was, was law. Uh, as he moves on, as he passes on, retires, gets out of the business and children take over, they no longer have the overlying structure of a person who's going to be the decider of last resort. They have to work it out themselves. And this is where a lot of the second generation problems come up. Unlike uh, disputes among independent parties, the emotional glue holding the parties together or apart is broader and deeper than commercial or investment interests. Often the underlying source of the conflict is due to something within the family structure 
that is likely to continue to create dissension after the dispute in question is addressed. Many of these underlying sources are unspoken and in many cases below consciousness, such as different views of fairness. What does fair mean? Does fair mean equal? Does fair mean looking at people's needs? Does fair mean giving more money to the uh, sister who has a child who needs special care? What does fairness mean? Is that really part of the first discussion? And I think it should be. Um, addictions. Many people know that a sister or brother has an addiction. Nobody talks about it and nobody uh, mentions it. And yet it has a great influence on trust. Uh, adoption. Uh, is one of the siblings adopted? Uh, how has that affected it? In the short blurb, which you'll see later as a, as a video, you'll see adoption as being a major point. Um, loyalty to the dead founder. Uh, how often have we heard that's not what dad would have wanted. That's not what mom would have wanted. No, mom and dad are gone. And yet still mom and dad exercise an influence on some and not others. Um, bullying, bullying that took place when they were eight years old or 10 years old may still be taking place in ways which are uh, not as visible, but just because, by ignoring the youngest daughter who may be brilliant, but really not permitted to exercise any of her uh, thoughts or any of her um, ideas in the family context because she's always the kid sister um, and in fact bullied into keeping quiet. Income disparity, as I mentioned before, that one is uh, maybe an investment banker has plenty of money and the other one doesn't. How do they deal with that as far as the family owned company goes? Gender. Uh, this is hopefully moving to be a lower level of conflict, but as we know, traditionally, the, the, the women in the family have not been given the, the, the greatest roles in the companies. It's usually the older son who, uh, who takes over, causing a problem right there. Uh, LGBTQ issues, which probably weren't even on the radar 50 years ago. Uh, although they existed, nobody talked about them. Race, particularly if one of the children has a, happens to be of a different race, will that affect the, um, uh, the relationship? Um, scapegoating, uh, making, putting all the problems onto one, the, the one crazy sister, she's causing all the problems. Um, sibling rivalry, which is, uh, goes in every family uh, at certain levels or not as to all wanting the love of the parent in different ways in more ways than the other. And um, that can continue even long after the parents are gone. Uh, triangulation, where uh, two of the siblings may talk to each other about all the problems and uh, particularly the problems with the third part uh, uh, sibling and not talk to that particular sibling. And lately, uh, although this is, might be more open than others, political uh, standpoints. Uh, I, I, I've not had familiarity with a family yet where this has come up within the family circle, but I know we all know it will. And we all know that this is a major uh, uh, point of dis distinction between uh, one view and another, and it will show up. Um, the recognition of the underlying issues is not a way of seeing the problem as irresolvable, but to use the mediation process as a safe place to dig deeper below the level of the instant conflict, hopefully to uncover authenticity and truth. There may be no telling what the result of uncovering the hidden source or sources of conflict may be. Whether a better working relationship or that one sibling leaves the business, uh, keeping, however, family ties intact, whether the business continues as is, but with adjustments to the management structure or a new way of doing business is decided. In most cases, anything is better than an inability to move forward because of business dysfunction that may eventually destroy the business. Now, why are family and business so uh, distinct and what, is, what are the conflicts that show up 
uh, just because they are different goals. The goals of a family, what is the goal of a family? To nurture and care for family members, make sure they're uh, well-educated, make sure they're cared for, make sure if they have problems are taken care of, uh, giving them um, love and comfort, uh, accepting parental authority at certain ages, uh, the structure of a parental authority. Uh, age and gender often determine roles within the family um, and the authority within the family. Long-term commitment to the well-being of family members held together by biological and emotional ties. These very important, probably the most important social interests are not identical with and are not and are often at cross purposes with a competitive business environment. Uh, there's a famous cartoon which is talked about by family business therapists where the husband has come home and sitting in a chair having a beer and his wife uh, is next, standing next to him and he says, uh, you're right, uh, Junior will get a raise. Now, obviously, it's family influence on that. The family is deciding if Junior gets a raise and it may have no relationship whatsoever to Junior's ability or his, uh, how he's performing his role. Um, what I'd like to do now is to show a sh two short clips. One clip, is, it has to do with a, um, uh, a role play situation that was made for the Family Firm Institute annual meeting. Uh, I'm chair of the mediation committee and the members of the committee are all the people in the role play. And uh, there are many more members but the ones who are in the role play are all members. And um, the first, the, let me read you what I put down for the, the description. Uh, four second generation members of the Beinert family own together 100% of Advanced Optical Products, LLC, a successful supplier to military industry and recently the sporting goods sector. The family is still reeling from the unexpected recent death last month of the founder, Hans Beinert, the father and uncle of the four new shareholders. He's the father of three and the uncle of one. His wife passed away three years ago. Under his will, Hans gave each of his three adult children and his nephew 25% of the shares of advance. Uh, they have a family business advisor. He's not trained as a mediator, but he's an excellent advisor. He's capable and trusted. He met with them uh, a few weeks ago and planned a two-hour meeting to assist them in appointing a CEO uh, and a board of directors. Uh, since there is not yet a shareholders agreement of any kind, none can elect a board or uh, control management without at least two others to reach majority, as you need, as in most cases, you need 51% if you have no other agreement. The meeting with Robert did not go well. The family, still grieving, was unable to maintain focus. There were emotional outbursts and the shareholders were unable to agree on anything. After realizing that he was out of his depth in dealing with emotional family conflicts, he suggested to the shareholders that they allow him to bring in two mediators who specialize in dealing with family business disputes. Now, you'll see, uh, one mediator alone happens to be me, and then two mediators in the joint session. Um, the shareholders, uh, well, they did decide on one thing just because they needed a CEO. So the one of the daughters became the acting CEO for 90 days until they work out how they should go forward. The shareholders, aged 28 to 35, have just had an introductory meeting with the two mediators. The principles and outlines of the mediation process have been clarified. And most importantly, the mediators explain that they do not make or recommend outcomes, that their family remains in control of their own decisions. Um, what you will first see is a short excerpt from the individual confidential meeting, which the mediator had with Toby, the adopted son and CFO of the company. And to give you just a rundown of who the four are, although Toby will be the only one in the first short video. Um, these, these are four to five, well, the, the, the individual the, are four to five minutes. You'll only see the one with Toby, although there are ones with the others too. 
which originally were uh, three minutes or 40 minutes each, but we had for the purposes of the presentation to cut them down to four minutes. So many of the things that you would expect to see as standard introduction type language are, are not in those videos. Um, so Toby, he was adopted from Korea, CFO, two children. He was adopted as a child. Carolyn, marketing manager, single mother. Janice, vice president, and she's the acting CEO. Uh, she's a former Navy helicopter pilot, married, has an, has an MBA. And the last one is Klaus. Uh, Klaus is a nephew, Israeli optical engineer. This was originally written to be a, 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 the father had come from Austria as an engineer and set up the business in the United States uh, because Klaus turned out to be one of our members who is a Israeli. She, still, she wore a baseball cap, you'll see it later, and um, is an Israeli optical engineer. So we had to change these the countries from uh, Austria to Israel. It doesn't matter really, but it was an interesting change we had to make. Um, Okay, uh, Natalie, would you uh, run uh, tape one, please? That's it. Tell it's me just, how it was for you growing up in this family. Well, you, you, you know, I, I'm adopted. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm a little different than, than the other kids. Really, they always made me feel a little different. So, I mean, the family was nice to me, and of course, uh, they gave me a home. But the, the truth is, I, I felt a little different. And, and Dad, well, Dad, was, he was hard to get close to, uh, you, you know. So, you know, working in the business, that was, you know, that was pretty good for me. I, I, I like that. You know, when Klaus came in, that was, that was a pain, really. Klaus, you know, Klaus a little bit of a drinker, and my dad, you know, dad was kind of a drinker, so Klaus would kind of encourage him to drink. I, 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 don't, I didn't like that too much. When you say they were nice to me, they meaning the parents, the siblings, they were treating you not like a, uh, a brother? That's right. I felt, I, you know, I, I felt that way. I felt like they were the family and I was kind of outside. Okay. And I think that, I think that uh, continues today. And of course, Klaus, you know, I, I mean, obviously he's related to my uncle and, you know, there's all that stuff between my dad and his brother. You know, there's a whole other story there. Of course, um, every, everybody's got their own story. That, that's, that's why you'll hear it. But what's important, I think, is that I'm probably the most serious-minded person here. I, I'm the one, you know, who's been the CEFO here. So I'm the one who's been uh, controlling the books. I have the relationship with the bank. I'm dealing with all the financial issues. And really, I think I've done a, a pretty good job. Did you talk to your father at all about... It, someday, if he retired, uh, which I'm, I, I do, I. By the way, I am so sorry about the death of your father. I should have said that right away, but I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, thank you. So, what, did he ever talk to you about a um, succession plan? No, no. I don't think he talked to anybody about it. I don't know. I don't know if he talked to anybody else. Um, he never talked to me about it. And um, my sisters never said anything to me about it. Uh, Klaus and I don't talk. Klaus and you don't talk. So can you talk some more about that? Is it that you just don't, with oil and water? Why wouldn't you talk? Well, I don't, I mean, we don't have that much to talk about. I don't have too much respect for him. Um, I don't know if his feelings towards me. Uh, 
most of the time he was just involved with himself or, you know, uh, I think sucking up to dad or, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. So, so you don't respect his uh, business or technical depth of this company as being important? I don't know. I mean, do you, you think the company should keep, I mean, Klaus is 25% owner like you are. Do you think they should try to keep him happy, uh, happy in the sense of doing what he's doing? Or um, do you have a deeper feeling that maybe it would be better without Klaus? Well, as an owner or as working in the company? Looking at it, I mean, looking at it as if you're an owner, looking at the company, you know the personnel, you know the business. Uh, is Klaus divisive enough that you would say maybe we do without him or, or between you and him that there's a problem? Well, you know, could he embarrass us? Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I, I, I don't you know. That would be a, a question. Okay. That's, I guess that's what I would say. I, I wouldn't want to say that right now, but it would be something to consider. Okay, before we go on to the next one, uh, if you can all hear me, um, I, I'd just like to make a few comments about that. I'm sure all the mediators were aware of the sort of standard mediator kind of repeating and open-ended questions. How was it growing up in the family? Uh, it was a um, not that different in the way it was handled from other mediation uh, private meetings. Um, and there was some reflection of what back what he had said and reflection to me. You and the the thing that I found most interesting was was. Uh, my question, my saying to him, you say they were nice to me, what does that mean? And uh, here we have someone who's been brought up since he was a child in the family and still talking about they and me in, in a kind of a separate way. Um, and uh, also asking why he would not talk to Klaus. Um, the, uh, I, I think I didn't, I, I still re I regret some one question that I said, and I, and I just to me a culpa it. I think I at the end I was sort of a little bit uh, direct in my questioning about his thoughts about uh, Klaus and whether he should be part of the company or not. I really, uh, of course, you can't see much of the the video, but it probably was a little bit unmediator like to go that far. It might be very advisor like but not mediator-like to ask that question rather than follow up on something he said. Um, so just for the interest of time, let's go on to the other video. And uh, this is now the group together. Uh, and you'll again see the uh, Toby, you'll see Carolyn, uh, marketing manager. You see Janice, uh, vice president um, uh, and acting CEO. Uh, and Klaus, the nephew. Uh, and you'll also see Natalie McVeigh, who is a brilliant mediator, and uh, she is co-mediating this with me, um, this joint meeting. Some rules and problems already. We didn't say probably the best thing to do is to physically hold your hand if you want to speak. And I know you did that, but I, we, we didn't talk about it before. So uh, and then uh, one of us will just say, okay, Janice or Klaus or whatever. So is that all right with everyone that we do it that way? Or is there some other way you'd like to do it? That's fine. That's good. Thank you. Okay. So um, is Janice, why don't you go first and give us uh, your view. Okay. So um, thanks for coming to meet with us today, um, Natalie Richard. Um, if it's okay with the rest of you guys, Given I've got the role of CEO for the first 90 days, of course we are grieving. And um, the loss is, is, is immense for us. Um, but I want to say that uh, we do have to come to some decision about a permanent CEO. 
And I know we all have our views about this, um, but I want to come up front and say that I feel that we've always had a gender issue in this family. Mum was never recognised. She was the the main business thread of this 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 family business, and uh, Mom, I feel Mom, that listen. we need to accept. We have some gender issues here, and I'd like to put myself forward for the CEO position. So Janice, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're the acting CEO, and you believe that because there has been gender inequity, your perception of that in the past, um, you believe that that should be corrected by uh, you continuing to be CEO. I don't think I don't think uh, that's the only reason. I think that uh, it's part of the reason. I think I'm the most qualified here, and I think we have to confront some issues. We have some issues in this family that we've never confronted when Mum and Dad were alive, and I feel in a position to help. Okay, uh, so it sounds like that's not the, the total equation qualifications really matter. Uh, Klaus, I saw your hand up. W what are your thoughts about the, this question of CEO? I was thinking that uh, we really have to look for the best interest of the company, naturally. And I don't know what I think about your ideas regarding gender issues. I think we have all kinds of issues here in the family. However, we are trying to small problem. the problem of the problem. company. So let's just, just leave the gender and all those emotional issues aside. You know, you know, I love you very much and I think highly of you, but I think everyone knows what Hans really wanted. And he is the, actually the one that led this family, this family and the, and the business. So, you know, you all know what I think. So what I'm hearing is that uh, you think gender really should not play a role in this decision. It's really what you believe uh, your uncle or their father had wanted should be given a, a prime position. And uh, that question of business, is that, what I, is that correct? Exactly, exactly. I think that as a family, we have to address all kinds of emotional issues. But as a company, really, I mean, come on. So, Klaus. Uh, I saw Toby's hand. Klaus. Okay, go ahead. Well, I, of course, I don't usually second Klaus, but I, I'm on a second Klaus here. I, I didn't think we were going to be in a family therapy session here. And I'm not interested in having a long discussion about gender issues or mom and dad, the history and all those kinds of things. I, I thought we were here to talk about the business, and, you know, what's good for the business. So what I'm hearing is that you think it would not be appropriate or necessary to go into those kinds of issues. You just want to go straight to business as Toby does, as, as Klaus does, and, uh, and not deal with emotional issues. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing here? Klaus, you know, we have to, we have to not look at what um, dad said he wanted. We're in charge now. We have to do what we think is best for the business. Me putting myself forward is not just about gender issues. If that was an aside, I think there are issues, but I think we have to look at what's best for the business. And I think, I'm sorry to say it, Klaus, but, you know, you have some issues that don't really, much as I love you back, still feel that you're not always compass mentis when you're coming in. Lunch times, you've had a drink too many. We have to be careful. Do you really want us to start insulting each other now? You know, I can say a few things that I, I don't want to say anything I will regret, regret later. So I don't know what you are insinuating. I do know that I'm so well familiar with the business issue. And I know that your father, who is my uncle, whom I really loved very, very much. He trusted me and he really let me know all the secrets and all the moves. And I'm really the most, the most skillful person here. 
think you'll know it. No. Well, I want to pause for a second here. Uh, Toby raised an interesting question, uh, which is what are we here to do? And I, I've heard several of you state a few things that I, I want to make sure I'm hearing correctly, which are, you know, we don't want to deal with emotions, yet these emotional things are coming up. Uh, there are questions about gender. This is clearly a time, as Richard mentioned earlier, uh, where you're all hurting. And Hans meant something different to all of you, very meaningful. Um, and there's also this question of what's the role of emotions in this? Um, it would be highly unlikely this, this won't be an emotional conversation. Are there things that you all want to make sure we don't discuss today? Or do you want to discuss everything that comes up and get through it? Janice? I think the stuff that didn't come up before. Because clearly Klaus thinks that he's the right person to lead the business. I think I am. We have to look at the reasons why we both think that. But at the same time, we can't avoid the emotional stuff. Caroline, why don't you... Yeah, Caroline. I don't think any of you are qualified to run the business. I think we need to hire either a non-family executive seasoned CEO with true leadership qualities and skills or we need to sell it at the highest value, take the cash and move on. Thanks for asking. Well, what I'm hearing Caroline say is that, uh, that you, at this point, she doesn't believe you have the leadership qualities, any of you, to lead the company. Uh, and I think we're calling a spade a spade here. We're being very clear, so it makes sense. And um, also that she has raised two other things, hiring somebody from the outside, and that maybe the best thing to do is to sell the company and get the best, most possible money for it. Those are big issues. And uh, I think there's no reason we can't touch on those today. There's no way we can resolve them, or you can. But uh, I think it's good to get views on them because it, it does affect the other decisions too. So, um, Klaus. I would just suggest that everyone here acts, you know, with some kind of responsibility. Caroline, just, you know, throwing words without any ground. Why do you do it? You always get so out of things. It's very responsible. It's really a big issue. Chiklaus, it sounds like what Carolyn said was hurtful. Um, and th there is a question about what what qualifications are. Um, Carolyn, did you intend to be hurtful when you made that comment? Of course she did. No, I did not intend to be hurtful. That's um, truly what I think is best for the company. I don't see any of uh, the siblings as being seasoned enough in their leadership roles or in their skill sets to take the company to the next level. That's my honest appraisal of what's going on here. But you don't want to take it to the next level. You just said you would think you wish it so. Well, if there's a strategic buyer who could take it to the next level, I think that would be best for the company, for the family, and for the employees. But I don't think any one of us has the skills to do that. Caroline, you must speak for yourself because I don't feel that way. Sorry, but I, I thought I was being asked what I thought about what was best for the company. So it seems to me we're getting off a little bit of a side issue, which is a major issue uh, of what the company's uh, future role should be. But I think no matter what you do, you're going to have to sell a company that is running and thriving. And therefore, the CEO choice is going to be important. So whatever you do decide on that and we can talk about that too the long-term vision it's a big question who can participate in the discussion i think caroline doesn't even know what are the plans for for the future i think janice and toddy will agree with me i mean how can you vote caroline if you have no idea of what's going on well i can vote because i'm 25 percent owner of the company and a member of the family that's why i can vote i've also led the fastest growing division of the company which is in the mountaineering and fashion division so i do think that i have a vote if you caroline, 
Caroline, you know, I love you. I think you're a great salesperson. I've always supported you. But in this situation, I agree with Klaus. I don't think you know enough about what's going on in the business. Of course, you have a vote. But you have to hear from those of us who have been involved in, in quite big ways within the business. Uh, particularly, you know, I, you know, I have a military background. We're looking to develop the military side of our products. Um, you know, I don't think you really do know what's going on. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I saw Caroline raise her hand. Caroline, would you like to say something? Yeah, I would, two points really. I mean, as, as long as we're going to, you know, tell the truth. Um, you know, I know firsthand of many um, top managers in the company that don't want to work for either Toby or Janice. And so we're likely to lose a lot of talent if they're put into positions of leadership. So I was asking, you mentioned, and I'm not sure any of the others have referred to Hans as his intentions, except you. So I'm wondering if you could talk about what you believe his intentions were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, um, uh, Hans came from Israel uh, many years ago and really brought with himself some many ideas and different views. And he worked very hard to be in this uh, company. And his children, who are very, are my, they are my cousin. I really love them. And they are very talented. But they were raised with a silver spoon. You know, I had to work very hard and I have so much experience and I have a refreshing view uh, about what can be done. I really have so much big plans for this company. Um, so if we can collaborate. You know, uh, Natalie, I, this is me in real life for a moment. I'm wondering whether we should and cut it, it now because it will go on another few minutes. And I'm afraid of eating too much into the... Uh, 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 um, Richard, can I ask a question, please? Sure. So, Richard, much of this seems to need to be bordering on psychotherapeutic. And I assume you're not a licensed therapist. So how do you personally draw the line between mediation and psychotherapy and uh, stay on your side of, of uh, practicing psychotherapy without a license? Well, you're absolutely right. I'm not a therapist. Uh, and uh, we make that very clear, of course, in the very beginning, that uh, if that's the family's desire, we can find people for them to do that. Um, the, the problem is that uh, I, I don't, we don't go into answering any of these questions. We're raising the questions, having them brought to the surface. And um, I, yeah, I think that we have to make it, there's a business which needs help at the moment. And so we have to go to that question first, the CEO decision here. And, um, but we're clear that we are not there to, uh, to overall uh, handle all of the issues that might come up from the past. But if they're not brought up from the past, they may continue to be, uh, affect the future. And that's all we're trying to do. I mean, not every, company has as many as this company. So uh, a lot of it was illustrative. But I, I agree, I, I cannot do the therapy and it's told in the beginning. In fact, this is in the context of being brought in by another family business advisor who may in fact be a therapist, who really, although a therapist could probably deal with many of these issues, but wouldn't have the business background. This would be uh, normal business advisors don't have that kind of background, but they don't also know how to deal with conflict. So we're brought in to be conflict resolvers. And then the, uh, the long-term advising can be go back to the uh, financial and uh, other type of business advisors. It's a question. It's a real difficult question. And thank you for your sensitivity to it, Richard. There's another uh, question in the chat about doing individual sessions with the participants. And I noticed there was no mention of uh, caucusing or, hey, why don't I talk to you privately about this now or in a few minutes? What is the role of um, 
uh, is this a, a joint session exclusively kind of process, Richard, or do you have the flexibility to caucus and talk separately with people? You know, families are, are a little different. I think that although caucusing is certainly possible, you really don't want to uh, upset everyone and to have a caucus for everyone might be too long. This is only the first of what may be 10 sessions. So it really is a snippet of a first session which leaves out a lot of the things which you, you mentioned and thought about. Um, so yeah, I think it, uh, there is a, a role uh, for, um, you know, this going forward. Uh, excuse me, it's got some spam coming in. Get rid of that. So, Richard, might you have private conversations with the different family members in between the sessions? Would you alert the other family members that that's what you're doing? Would you typically talk to everybody? How do you handle that? Yeah, typically everybody. And in fact, I just finished a mediation last week where I spent on the phone or on, on Zoom with each, there were three brothers, each one of them uh, several times a week. And then we would come together at the end of the week after having explored things together. Uh, so yeah, everyone knows there's going to be caucusing. And I think it would be difficult to get them to trust. I mean, it's more for a trust issue with me or with the mediator than to get a lot of new information. Um, I think it's, uh, but it, it does happen. And yeah, caucusing is used. Bernard Morrow has a question, Richard. Yeah. Okay Thanks, Jeff. I question. mean, just to pick up on what you're saying, um, in, in my experience in dealing with families and family business disputes, um, I, I do conduct individual sessions first um, I think it's a worthwhile investment, and I, I feel that in particular in these cases, you can't, you can't rush them and bring people together. And I, I, I think this role play was really interesting. Um, initially, there were, there were, you know, emotions that were sort of simmer, simmering below the surface, and then they started to percolate. But, you know, you often find in the, in the real world that, that, you know, people are afraid to reveal their emotions, uh, depending on their culture um, and their underlying feelings. And they might, they might be more inclined to do that, you know, in a, in a private session. So I feel I, I can help them uh, reveal some of those things privately and then help coach them um, to express them in a, in a more fulsome way when we do get together. Um, because the, like, from my, from my own experience, I just think that, yes, we're not therapists, but until the emotional stuff gets dealt with, um, how ready can the parties be to, to talk about business? You know, it's, it's sort of putting the cart before the horse. It, it, if there are underlying issues there, resentments, um, then uh, those things have to be dealt with. Richard, comment? I would just say that uh, as, as a famous mediator I know says, uh, every mediation, uh, even commercial mediations have a tremendous uh, uh, emotional element. Uh, he says everyone's 100%. So of, of, it, of the emotions are, of, of the mediations have an emotional element. So I, I, we're not gonna get away from them. And sometimes expressing them may be enough to get people to the point of, uh, uh, of talking about that. And in other words, it, it, it's not treating it, not therapy, but just expressing it. Um, and, and as you saw, the first session was only one. The first one I did with Toby, there were three others with each of the others and they were both trust building and coaching. There's a lot of coaching involved, which you didn't get a chance to see uh, for people who felt um, hesitant to talk in front of the others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, it's, it, that's fair. It's a role play and it's a short snippet, but I, I, I um, my, you know, kind of overarching sentiment would be that, that um, like in any dispute, really, whether it's a, you know, a, a commercial dispute not involving family, family members or a family dispute involving commercial issues, um, until the emotional issues are dealt with, it's difficult to get to, a discussion of the business and and it seemed that there was sort of a 
you know, a desire on the part of some to talk about the business, which is then leaping into options, right? Where you're talking about, you know, actual things to do to, to solve some of the substantive problems. And I just don't think you can go there until the emotional stuff's dealt with. Thank you, Bernard. Richard, we have just a couple of minutes left and I wanna make sure that you're able to raise uh, whatever you think is most important that hasn't yet been covered in our remaining time. Yeah, let me just give a few tips uh, for dealing with family businesses. Uh, one is uh, getting early acceptance from each party that any solution will be fair and then exploring for them, with them what they believe fairness means. Um, learn about the dynamics of the family and the history of the relationships before the dispute uh, as much as you can um, so you're not blindsided. Um, uh, Third is make sure that each party consents to your participation. Very often you'll be uh, contacted by uh, the founder who owns, still owns a good share, but there are other shareholders as well. Um, make sure that each one of the family members who's participating agrees to my participation. Otherwise they will always feel it's, oh, dad wants to do this, let's go along with it. But if, if there's any of that feeling, I want to flesh that out right away. Um, use pre-joint session private meetings with each family member to explore their feelings about the dispute and their relationships with the family members. That's what we were just talking about. Um, a few others. Uh, one, have discussions in an informal place. And now that's quite easy now with Zoom. We're all informal. Um, in fact, I think it's probably improved the relationships in some ways. But when we get back to normal, a law firm conference room is very stilted and very unusual for many family members. Um, develop an issues list at private meetings to help with the agenda at the joint meeting. Uh, be clear about the goal of the meeting. In other words, to choose a CEO is really what we're here to do uh, in order to rein back some extraneous conversations. Although again, sometimes you have to follow those leads to get at what is underneath it. Um, also, that's, I don't believe that the mediator should be developing the agenda, but just kind of to hint what they might talk about if they seem to be having trouble. Uh, listen, listen, listen. I don't think that's, I need to tell the mediators anything more about that. And last, don't confuse the role of the mediator with that of the family business advisor. And I put a quote here that I hear all the time. Please tell us what you think we should do. And, um, once you do tell them what you think you should do, even if you thought you had the greatest idea possible, um, there'll be some that object to that. Then suddenly you are in the middle of the dispute and you're no longer the neutral mediator. So that's, um, those are my short tips of running or doing a family business mediation. Richard, those are all great points, thank you. Richard, there were a couple of questions in the chat where people had questions about their own individual circumstances and people might want the opportunity to contact you offline. Could you uh, share your contact information, please? Sure, my e email address is rlutringer, uh, that's R and L-U-T-R-I-N-G-E-R, at mac, M-A-C, dot com. And I'd really be happy to follow up with anyone um, on any of these points. And, and also welcome anyone who wanted to join the Family Firm Institute, being a member of our mediation committee. We have about 30 mediators from around the world, all, some of whom you saw from England, from Israel. Uh, we have them from South America and many from the States. And we talk every month about issues uh, uh, concerning family mediation. Well, this is great, Richard. Thank you so much. And anyone who's in a position to help us fight food insecurity, please, the Find Food Bank. It's www.findfoodbank.org. We appreciate your support of that or any other food bank you are able to support. If you are kind enough to inform uh, Natalie, uh, Jean, or myself of the uh, contribution, we'll be really proud to add it to the running total. It's a very generous community. Thank you all so much. We'll be back next Thursday morning with an interview with Grace Hansen from Hiscox Insurance, what mediators need to know about the London insurance markets. Richard, thank you so much. Okay, have a great day, everyone. With that, we are complete.